Hello everyone, welcome to Bayou Hill Bullet Journaling. This is our fifth video in our beginner bullet journaling series. And in today's video, we are going to work on our weekly spreads for January of 2023, along with migrating all of our information from our future log and from our monthly logs into um, the weekly log and also um, filling out the rest of our collections pages. So after today, our bullet journal will be completely ready to get started um, for January. So what we're going to do first is we're going to flip through and we're going to go page by page of what we've done already and we are going to fill out what we can in order to prepare ourselves for January. First thing is first is our at a glance page which pretty much is just for glancing at. <laughs> there's not going to be anything we're going to be adding to that page and there's going to be um, possibly more birthdays and anniversaries and important dates that you can add throughout the year. Um, but as you can see for January for me, let me get this out of the way, um, I have several birthdays. So I will need to migrate those into my monthly spread for January. So we're going to flip to our monthly spread here in January. And I think I'm going to use a number two um, or a Pigma Micron pen and just kind of flip through. And uh, normally what I tend to do is um, just write down at the very top or the very bottom Okay, so that was my January birthdays and important dates, and I took them from our birthday collection page, migrated them over into our monthly log, and eventually we'll take from our monthly log and migrate them into our weeklies. So that's the plan. Now we're gonna to flip to my future log and I can just quickly glance down the January column and obviously I don't have much written down, but I do have something for January and that's teaching a bullet journal in class um, on the 28th. So I will write that down. That is kind of up in the air. Um, so how am I gonna denote that? Let's see, maybe kind of put it in parentheses here, as in it's kind of up in the air. Um, and then as you can see, that's it, um, as far as my future log goes for right now. One thing that um, I hadn't had done is fill out my word of the year, but I have chosen it and it is mindfulness. Um, and then I wrote down just a couple of my own personal definitions, I guess. Uh, focusing one's awareness on the present moment, slowing down to notice things. Um, I'm one of those people where if I get into a groove, I just kind of go on autopilot and that goes for everything, including my eating. And that's something that I really want to work on this year, uh, for 2023 rather, um, is slowing down and eating um, also slowing down and um, just kind of enjoying life, you know, uh, taking my time with things, really paying attention to the things that matter instead of just kind of going through the motions of everyday life. So I thought that that was a perfect word. Now we're going to move to our level 10 life and we're going to fill this out. Now, With this, my plan is, is I'm going to take probably a purple pen and just kind of dot where I think I'm currently at 
with each one of these topics. So for example, with friends and family, I'm gonna rate that kind of low because I'm a, an extreme introvert and I really enjoy being at home. I enjoy being alone. Um, I don't have friends per se. I don't do anything with anybody. Um, and so I'm looking to change that. I'm actually taking steps currently um, and I've really been proud of myself. But with my immediate family, you know, my kids and my husband, I'm doing okay. So I don't want to rate it like too terribly low, but I'm still going to give myself a low rating because there's significant room for improvement. So I think on a scale of one to 10, which I have 10 boxes here, I just didn't number them because I felt like it would kind of get a little muddied and too much on the page. So this is a score of one, two, three, all the way up into 10, with 10 being, oh, I'm perfect in that category, which you should never be at a 10. <laughs> There's always room for improvement. So for friends and family, I'm gonna rate myself a three, and then I left myself three different, um, three blanks here. So I'm gonna have three goals pertaining to friends and family. Um, and I'll go through and fill out one with you guys so that you can kind of see. Um, but I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time because I think that it's going to be kind of, I mean, you'll get the, you'll get the idea once I get started. So um, for friends and family, my, one of my goals is I want to go to like one event per month with other people, meet new people, um, get myself out of my comfort zone of being at home and uh, really push myself to do that. So um, go to one social event per month. And you might think that that's really low, but I'm a stay at home mom, so I'm literally home all the time. So going to one event per month is actually gonna be kind of like a baby step for me. Um, you don't want to make these too grandiose to where they're unattainable. You want something that you can attain and then you can always alter your goals later on. For the sake of time here, I decided to speed up the video, but I'll still walk through all of the goals that I've chosen. So for personal development, I put wake and sleep schedule. For spirituality, that can be defined as however you define spirituality. For me, that's attending church. So I wrote attend Sunday school regularly, which I am currently already doing. I just want to keep it up. For finances, um, since I am a stay-at-home mom, but I do have a cookie business on the side, um, I really don't want to do too much with my finances because I'm trying to find a balance between working and being a stay-at-home mom and my personal self-care. So for finances, I thought that um, I could work on getting my YouTube channel monetized um, to make a little bit of extra income. For my career, um, I just really want to work on I'm happy with the way that my career is going right now. Like I said, I don't want to grow my business too much because I want a healthy balance. So I thought I could teach some cookie classes, uh, maybe four times a year, just to make a little extra income and do something different so that um, it's not so monotonous. Fun and recreation, um, I would love to be able to host a game night without kids. Um, this particular goal also works with the first one, friends and family, because in order to host a game night, you have to have people come. So it would be a way for me to invite some friends over. Giving and contributions, I want to do a random act of kindness one time per month. For my physical environment, since I am home all the time, if I could just stick to my cleaning schedule, it would be a game changer for me. So I really wanna work on doing that this year. For health and fitness, I really do want to work out five times per week. I feel like that is a very good goal. And for romance, I would like to go on a date night one time per week with my husband. 
we both really want to strive to do this. And there you have it. That's how you fill out your level 10 life. And I don't really like these dots. I may go back through and um, color them in, you know, like as a bar graph. So something like this and then like color it in because I feel like that would look better, but I can do that back on my own time. But, um, and then I'm gonna go back through and write down two other goals Per section and then you can reassess every month um, uh, quarterly if you'd like to um, in the uh, halfway through the year whatever you feel like you know looking back at it see how you're going with your goals and then um, reassess and see if you need to change some you need to work more on some um, if you need to add if you've improved if you've decreased but obviously your goal is to try to get closer and closer and closer to that um, level 10. Now my bucket list, so let's see. Um, I don't feel like I need to fill this out with you guys like for a long time because I feel like it's kind of, I mean, everybody knows what a bucket list is. Um, but what I plan on doing is this is gonna be kind of more short term bucket list items, like things that I can attain for example, um, I want to go to a murder mystery party. That's something that I can do this year for, or 2023 for sure. But like maybe I won't be able to afford to like take a trip to Australia, which is something that I also want to do. So that's why I have two different post-it notes here. And then for me, I have a ton of stuff that I want to learn or research or I put that here because I'm one of those people where I could just learn as a job like if I could just you know go to college and take like a million classes and learn a ton of different things that's me so um, I think just writing down just things that I want to learn and then if you know I have the time and I'm bored and I want to fill my t you know space with something then you know it could be as something as simple as I want to learn how to paint my own nails or something it doesn't have to be big grandiose things Um, this is something that I can't fill out yet because you have to wait until 2023 to do so. So this, I would write down any kind of TV show. The way that I write mine down is I'll write down the name of the show. For example, my husband and I just went back and we rewatched Breaking Bad and I've never seen Better Call Saul. So we went, uh, well, after Breaking Bad, we watched the movie El Camino, which I have also never seen. And then we went and watched Better Call Saul. So we just finished that up. So the way I would write that is Breaking Bad and then I'd write this uh, seasons that I watched it or if I watched it all I'd write all but most of the time I write it per season because I'm I'm really bad at if I'm not watching TV with my husband I don't watch it at all like we don't have TV we literally have an antenna <laughs> we don't pay for any kind of um, TV except for Netflix so um, if I'm not watching TV with my husband um, then I don't watch Occasionally, I will watch YouTube videos. That's kind of what I do while I decorate cookies, but or I listen to podcasts. But TV and movies, I'm not so big on doing that like on my own time. It's kind of like that's me and my husband's kind of date thing. So um, I don't really do much of it. And then one of my goals, I didn't write it down on my level 10, but it is something I'm going to write down, and that's reading more books. So I plan on filling out a little bit more. Uh, hopefully books this coming year can't fill out anything here but I can't wait to see what crazy things my kids say and do I always love looking back at this page and gifts I don't have anything to write down wish lists I will wait until the first of the year as well because who knows what I'm gonna get for Christmas I may be able to take some things off of my wish list Obviously, I can't actually color in some of these books because I have finished reading some of the books of the Bible, but I'm going to wait until the first of the year um, because I may have some more to add, so I'll color those in. And then this is just a page where we can go back and I can add more things to it as I think about it. And I think what I'm going to do with this page is I'm going to have a pop-out and I'm going to tape it to the inside cover right here and just kind of 
pop it out and I think I may laminate it. I'm not sure yet, but that way when I'm on my weekly spreads, I can pop that sucker out and I don't have to write down all of my daily tasks for that, um, for that day. And I can use a um, dry erase marker to mark it and then I can erase it and then redo it every day instead of having to write it down every day. It's just kind of a thought. I may play around with that idea. So this I will wait and fill out and you guys won't see me fill this out, <laughs> but I will uh, fill it out and mark where I'm currently at and all of my uh, inches there because I'm one of those people where I don't lose weight. I lose inches first and I want to be able to see results even if I don't see them on the scale. Obviously I can't fill out my period tracker yet. I can start filling this out, but I won't bo bother doing that on camera with you guys. But um, I've been making new breakfasts. My new thing, my thing for this month has, has been breakfasts. So I will make a new breakfast for my kids um, for like three to four days out of the week. And whatever they like, I'll write it down. And whatever they don't really care for, I won't write it down. And then hopefully I have a list of breakfast ideas that you know I can kind of make and they will eat so I plan on doing that for everything writing all that down and then here we are January so now we are on our uh, monthly page so I do have some things written down from what we did earlier and instead of writing things down on our future log for January because we have January already in our uh, bullet journal we will just write them here now this has now become our new future log for January in a sense we can't really do that for say June because we haven't put June in our journal so as soon as you put um, a monthly log in your journal for a specific month you no longer really need to put anything on the future log anymore because you have a place to put it I hope that makes sense so um, from here on out, if something happens and I need to write something down, you know, there's an event that I need to go to, I will write it down here. I won't bother with having to write it down on the future log and here. That's just kind of more work for you. So, um, keep that in mind. Anything that pops up, whether it be, for example, um, my son starting, I think, the 7th. He's going to start having basketball games, so I'll write down the times of his basketball games. And he has, you know, speech therapy on Wednesdays. Um, so as we get closer to the end of December, I'll start writing down his speech therapy appointments. You get the idea. And then, of course, this is a running log of any kind of to do's that I need to do. And that the idea here is that this is kind of like almost a brain dump for to do's, I guess you can say so that you can look back at this and then you can start adding them to your weeklies and go, oh yes, I need to do this. Let me put it in my weeklies. Well, I'm gonna do that on Wednesday, I have time. I like this. Some people write goals, I wrote focus. Um, gives you an intent for the month, kind of things that you wanna really focus and narrow down on and work on. This can come from your level 10 life. Um, things that you want to focus on. It can also come from um, just uh, if you want to break down like uh, only work focus here, you can do that too. It can really be anything that you want to focus on. Habits. Okay, so my goal for habits was to write down what habit it is on the side here. So um, I want to work out, so I and I want to do two different types of workouts. So I want a cardio workout, and I want a weight workout. And other habits that I can track. I'm not 100% sure what I want to track, but maybe. Oh, I I do. Um, uh, wake up. I guess I can write wake up because that is one of my goals that I wrote down on my level 10. Let's flip back real fast. So my goal for one of my personal development goals is wake and sleep schedule. What I mean by that is I want to get into the habit of 
waking up at the same time every day and going to bed at the same time every day. I am a night person and I mean, I can stay up till two o'clock easy every single night, but then I struggle and for my mental health, I feel like it would just be much better if I put myself on a schedule. So that's what I mean by that. So when I write wake up here on the side, that's what I mean, like my wake up goal. Did you wake up at the time that you wanna wake up every single day? And I guess that I can also write uh, sleep. A lot of people will track their sleep and what they mean by that is like getting, you know, X amount of hours of sleep per night. I don't, I don't really do that. I think that if I go to bed at, you know, and by when I go, mean go to bed, I mean go lay down in my bed. If I don't fall asleep, I don't fall asleep, but at least I'm in my bed and my body is relaxing in order for it to fall asleep. I'm not actively working on cookies late at night or I'm not actively watching, you know, a random YouTube video or whatever to keep myself awake. I'm in the bed, um, possibly reading a book, but no screens, just kind of relaxing. And then I have like four other habits that I can track, which I will fill out later. I think that you guys kind of get the idea. And the idea here is that uh, for the 1st of January, what I'll do is I'll take my highlighter. If I did cardio workout that uh, day, I will just highlight the, the number one for the, if I did it on that particular uh, date. And if I don't do it, I don't highlight it. And so at the end of the month, you can kind of see kind of what you're slacking in. You can kind of also see like patterns in your um, things that you do. So um, whether that be good or bad patterns. Can't do this until the beginning of the year as well. Obviously writing down our memories and our brain dump. I mean, you can start brain dumping now if you want to, if it pertains to something that you know you can do in January, you can start just kind of jotting things down. For example, I'm teaching that bullet journaling class the 28th of this month. I think it was the 28th um, that I have to double check to make sure that I'm still doing. But I can start kind of, you know, writing down things that come to my, oh, I want to teach them this. I want to teach them. Oh, I need to buy this. I need to get ready. So this might be, um, for me, become a brain dip specifically for that class that I'm teaching. So. Uh, it's just nice to have this like a blank page where you can do whatever. You never know it pops up in the middle of the month. Now we're going to move to our weekly spreads. And for our weekly spreads, we're going to do still stick with the same color theme. So we're going to still stick with the purples, the gray, and the black. And then we may throw in some butterflies on some of the pages. But I just kind of want to show you the basic layout of what I... Um, Kind of what I put on my weeklies and then every single week going forward it's going to be set up different and the reason I do that is number one so that I don't get bored number two to show you guys different options of what you can and can do and, and all the many ways you can set up your um, your weeklies for all this week spreads going forward I um, always keep the same thing in this top left hand corner I write down the week that I'm currently on and then I write down the whole calendar of the month and then I highlight the week that I'm on so that I can easily tell where in the month that I am and this particular page is going to be very different because as you can see the 1st of January starts on a Sunday and I am currently doing a Monday start. So what I do is for this first page is I'll write all eight days starting from the 1st through the 8th on this particular page. So this page will be different than other pages going forward. And voila, here is the finished spread. 
my phone cut out on me so here's the finished one I, luckily I did catch it <laughs> but here it is done and I just went with alternating colors in the boxes and I went ahead and I took the only thing that I had for this week which was a birthday and I wrote it down now this is gonna be an event it's not gonna be a task to do unless maybe let's just say like I text her or call her for a birthday and tell her happy birthday but um, I can take that uh, box and if I decide to do that which obviously I will I can cross it off whenever it's completed if it's an event then it wouldn't be anything that I need to um, check or mark off so that box would be denoted in a different way so um, but I think I'm gonna keep it as a task because I need to um, text her or call her to tell her happy birthday so I'm gonna I'm gonna use the opposite color that's around the box so I'm gonna denote that as a dot the dot means that's a task as you can see again this is this spread right here is gonna be completely different um, because we have eight days on it so it's kind of crammed so I you, you know you kind of have to pick and choose what I put but for me I feel like it's plenty of room um, I have a place for my this week's goals I've got a place for planning my meals which um, mine is gonna look a little different than y'all's because um, I only have I only need two spaces for my meal planning because I do breakfast and then I do only one meal that I cook. maybe you do too maybe you go to work and you don't really need to like plan for your meal at work or whatever but um, I only cook when my husband's home so um, depending on whether he's working days or nights I will either cook for uh, lunch or I'll cook for supper and the other meal it's just me and the kids I'm not gonna cook this grandiose meal it's gonna be something quick and fast so sometimes that's a sandwich sometimes that's just heating up leftovers sometimes that's like we eat a lot of kind of like what I call charcuterie I guess you could say you know kind of like an, like an adult lunchable kind of <laughs> I could eat deli stuff all the time well sometimes we'll eat salad um, but um, you know it's nothing that I have to like really really cook and prepare for a long period of time so um, I don't include that with my meal planning. I only include the stuff that I really have to cook. So like I can remember basically to take the food out of the freezer to thaw it because I can't tell you how many times my brain does not remember to do that. So planning out the meals, which I've actually started this week and so far so good. It is so nice to be able to do that. Um, but anyways, uh, having that section to do that is a game changer for me personally. If you don't meal plan, use that for something that you use or that you will use. Um, you have a notes section. You, again, you can label this however you like. It could be a to-do section. And then next week can also be labeled like future um, so that you can kind of write down future stuff. So this is our first week. Now, typically, what you're so technically supposed to do is you're only supposed to go day to day, like in real, like bullet journaling. I don't want to say real bullet journaling, but the way that it was um, uh, designed was for you to go day to day. So I can't do that. I at least go week to week. But for for purposes of this video, I went ahead and did all the weeks. Um, because what if you don't like this particular layout, if you forgot to write something down on this page that you really want to include, or maybe like um, next week at work, you're going to have like a special project to do, you need to include that. You never know what's going to happen until that particular week comes about. So technically you're supposed to do just this week and then on Saturday or Sunday on the 7th or 8th, you will flip over and start to do your next week. Okay. I don't blame you if you go ahead and do the whole thing because me personally, I, <laughs> I'm one of those people like I just want to kind of do it and get it over with so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I'm really going to try to do my best to do it the way that it's been intended, you know, for you to do. For the second week spread, I'm going to keep the top left hand corner the same. I will write week two instead of week one, of course, and I will highlight the next week in the month. Here at the top I decided to put my meal planning 
instead of doing it vertically like I did on the first page, I decided to do it horizontally. I stuck it at the top so that it's easier to see. And I have four boxes down is how wide it is. I also decided to do this spread very free flowing. And what I mean by that is I'm just kind of randomly putting the days of the week on the pages. And normally I would not suggest doing it this way. Reason being is that um, what if you have more tasks to write down for Wednesday than you do Monday? And as you can see, Monday has this really large gap and Wednesday doesn't. So this is a perfect example of why you should plan day to day and not necessarily write down all of your days of the week on your spread. You should write down Monday, do your tasks, and then at the end of Monday, you come back um, and then you write down Tuesday and so forth and so on. It saves space in your journal. And the last thing I'm doing here is I'm writing down my daily chores and I'm just migrating them from my master chore list collection and I'm writing them down here on the page so that I can easily check it off per day of the week. And here's how it turned out. Now, if I had to go back and do it over again, I would probably take a gray marker instead of the blue and draw in the circle um, because I feel like that's a lot of kind of purple and having a different color would kind of make it stand out a little bit more. Other than that, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I put a box around my goals just because I wanted those to kind of be combined together and then my chores over here is in a box to keep them combined together because we kind of have this free flowing uh, page for this week and there's really no boxes hindering where you can write so I kind of wanted to make sure I kept what I wanted to keep together together <laughs> if that makes any sense whatsoever at all. Um, for our next week we're moving on to week three and as you can see, I went ahead and filled in the calendars because I felt like that was just, I mean, y'all don't need to see me do that every single time, right? But now we are moving on to week three. So I'm going to highlight the third week in January. And voila, here is the finished week 
three spread for January. So I kind of did the opposite on this spread as what I did on this one. So on this one we had very loose um, sections for our weeks, but then I had very structured sections for everything else. And here I had very structured sections for our weeks, so I kind of went really loose with the things around it, except for this, I just felt like I, I probably could have just gotten away with just these two lines instead of the box, but you know, it is what it is. So I have, you know, a very loose section for my goals, a very loose section for to-dos, and for the meal plan, I did go ahead and write down the uh, days of the week, um, but I just didn't put boxes around it. So, um, but this is the uh, finished look. I forgot to put a line down here so I can go ahead and finish that because that will bother me. I do not. Quick fix. Boop. Don't know how much good that ruler did, but that's okay. <laughs> so there is the spread for week three. Now flipping over to week four, again, a different version for you guys to see. I went ahead and did this for you guys and I highlighted the week that we're currently on. We're in week four. So for this spread, I've decided that I would combine my meal planning with my dailies. So at the very top, there's going to be a box and that's where I'll put my meal plan for the week for that particular day and then underneath it is where I will write all of my tasks and events at the very end of this other page I will have a eighth box and so I decided to use that for my next week section and one thing to note for this page is that the fourth week stops on the 29th. There's still the 30th and the 31st. But in order to keep our weeks starting on Monday, I will have to add those to our February spread. So um, January will stop with the 29th. And here we are, here's what I came up with. Um, I added a monthly summary box. This is just gonna be where I kind of assess um, how well I think the month went, if I achieved certain goals, whether I didn't um, achieve goals, maybe if I need to reassess some goals, if I feel like I'm not um, gonna be able to do that and I need to um, rethink them and reformulate some goals um, and then obviously you know I included my weekly goals here so um, that's about it the only other thing that we need to go back and do is a 33 page 33 and we started the week on page 26. So 26 to 33, we're gonna flip back to our index here. Um, 26 to 33, we have our January weeklies. There we go, so now we have our contents, our index page updated. We're going to flip back to our uh, monthly spread here, and I'm just going to include all of the birthdays. Now, 
Um, one thing that I also think would be helpful is I think I'm going to go through and write the weeks down on the side of my monthly because um, since I have it on my dailies, you know, what week it is, this is week four, I think it's going to be helpful if I write it down on the side here so that I know what week I'm on. So I think I'm just going to do that real fast. Oh, I wanted to do it in gray. Where's my gray pen? Oh well. And although I didn't include 30 and 31 on the January, I'm included in February. I'm still gonna go ahead and write week five because technically it is week five and if I'm looking for it, then I'll know where to find it. So just to kind of recap, we'll flip to our first week of January. Here is our weekly. The second week, our third week, and our fourth week, which includes a monthly summary for us to nicely wrap up January of 2023. Now you guys are ready to start your bullet journal for 2023. There's nothing else that you need to add. The only thing that you can add is if you have any other information, you can go ahead and uh, if it comes up, write it on your January monthlies and go ahead and put it in your weeklies if you've set it up all the way through like mine. If you're gonna wait um, and do it per week, um, which I recommend, then um, you go ahead and use this kind of as your hub to write down everything until you can make it to that specific week where your information is needed to be put in. Well, that ends this bullet journal setup for 2023. I hope that you enjoyed um, what we did for January. And I will see you guys probably in the middle of January whenever I show you our February spread. Until then, goodbye.